Hi, this is Greg Whedon, and in this series we're going to walk you through a typical 3D coat workflow. First we'll explore the process of voxel modeling and sculpting, and then move on to retopology, UV layout, and texture painting. Um, the game I plan on creating is a ghost town game, and this will be the ghost character that um, one of your nemesis. It's going to be more of a puzzle type game, a, a solve a mystery game, but every once in a while he'll pop up into it. Um, today I was just going to go ahead and model the hat. Um, I'll probably go ahead and do the retopo as well and um, I'm going to be finishing it or, or at least the geometry I'm going to finish it in uh, Lightwave because honestly I have no end of trouble getting um, a thin edge like this when I go to retopo in um, 3D coat. So just looking at this, I'm going to build this from some primitives. This is obviously a couple cylinders, and actually it's just going to be three cylinders. I don't really need this reference up. Being exact on this is not a, one of my goals. I just want to get kind of a cartoony looking funny ghost with a floppy hat. And I drew this from the side as well, though you can see it's, it's far from accurate as far as the side view goes. This, I think, is a great little program. Um, and I purchased it online from, let me hide it, I purchased it from scarymonsters.org and it's called Reference Image. And while I won't be using it, especially in this video, um, I do plan on using it in others where you have to, where I can actually trace over the top of things to right through that image. It's a really cool program. The plugin I'm going to use in Lightwave is a free plugin called Thickness and you can get it from this address right here. You might want to pause and write down the address if you don't already have it or if you're not familiar with it. And also Blender has a similar plugin in the Blender 2.5 and you can download that um, if you don't have Lightwave or Max. So if you're a Max user you could do the same thing with Shell. Or if you're just really a patient person you could probably actually manage to, to get that edge in 3D Coat. So anyway, I'm going to get started. Uh, like I said, I'm just going to use a cylinder to start with. And that looks probably about right for the top of the hat. So without further ado, I'm just going to go ahead and do this um, without too much talking. I want to do the hat band next. And actually, I didn't have to make this thicker. This is going to be really, let me, let me pull the image back up. This ghost character is not going to be highly detailed. You'll never see him that up close unless I use it for a splash screen. But, um, so here's the hat band. And I'm going to do this one more time for the brim of the hat. And I'm going to stretch it out pretty far. How th the thickness of it right now at this point doesn't really matter because... Like I said, I'm not going to try to get this retopo in um, 3D coat. But I do want it big enough and thick enough that if I smooth it out, I don't create holes in it. If, if you create something too thin in 3D coat and then you try to uh, smooth it just a little bit too much, it'll eat right through there. Which is a good thing if, if you're trying to put holes in your geometry. So that looks good to me. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the Move tool. Uh, it looks about right. Um, using the move tool, let me go ahead and change the shader so we can see a little bit better. Uh, no. I do like this one a lot. Alright, I'm going to use the move tool just to pull that front up like I was showing in the drawing. And pull these sides up a little bit. Also, the ghost has kind of a pointy head. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the center up as well. And I think I will go ahead and turn symmetry on by hitting the S key. Well, you can see where we are here. You can see I've kind of... I should have done that at the beginning. But I'll go ahead and correct that now. I want to pull the back down a little bit so the rain can fall off of it. And pull up a little bit in the middle for his head. And that's good. Remember, this is a ghost. Um, his clothes are not going to be new. So, 
we want to make them kind of worn looking and, and not perfect by any means. And I want to go ahead and pull that in. I'm going to use the uh, pose tool because I would like to taper this up at the top a little bit. Probably like that. That looks good. Okay, back to the move tool. And I'm going to open the drawing up one more time. You see how it swoops down in the front up on the sides and down in the back. So let me go ahead and do that. I'm going to make this brush really pretty big. Down in the front, up on the sides, and down in the back. I make it really big for this. That's pretty close to what I want right there. And now it's just a matter of kind of tweaking it along a little bit until you get the exact shape you're after. Actually, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and save the sculpt here. and I'll call this hat voxel. Okay, over to the retopo room. Um, I'm going to turn symmetry off. And mainly just do this with the strokes tool. Uh, some of it I'm going to have to build out. There's a start. Um, go to the points and faces. I want to close this hole up. And I'm going to go back to the strokes tool. I'm going to do this from the back because this is the lowest area here. <clears throat> if I do it from the front and I start up here because I'm not paying attention, it'll it'll do some crazy stuff back in here. So you probably want to find the lowest area of your model to go ahead and put the strokes back in, like so. I kind of want this to be fairly low polygon. I'm not concerned with a bunch of bumps or anything else in this hat. Let's see what that gave me. See there? So we don't want that for sure. I'll go around to the front now and go ahead and put a stroke through. Let's see here. I'm going to go from that point straight down. Right? And I'll go ahead and move vertices and pull these right up to the edge. Um, I can split this uh, this ring, which is what I'm going to be doing after I get these connected. But I just find this kind of an easy way to do this. Right, that looks all right. And I'll go ahead and use the points and faces to connect these by right clicking. And I have a little bit of adjusting to do here. So back to the move vertices. And once again, this is not going to be a, a high poly object or anything. It's just kind of a, the ghost isn't really a major part of this game. He's just kind of an annoyance more than anything that you have to shoot. Uh, this is going to be kind of a kid's game. They're not actually going to shoot him with bullets. They're going to shoot water balloons at him. I'm going to go to the split rings tool and we'll pop one right there to kind of help hold that shape. <coughs> 
and I'm going to go ahead and put another right here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull these all the way down to the bottom and then we'll do the split rings again. I just think this is a little bit faster way to do things than to, um, as long as you don't do that. It's, it's easier just to pull them straight down and then we'll do a couple split rings. Since this is going to be a low poly character, I may not even worry about modeling this edge in. Um, you'll never really see that geometry up close, like I said. But just in case I do want to do something with it later, a little higher um, polygon count, I'm going to go ahead and do a split ring twice here. Once there and once here. So now that's where that edge goes. All right. I'm going to split rings again and this time what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull these out to the edge and then do some more splits. So back to the move vertices. Make sure I grab the right one. and go ahead and do a split rings here and one more and also I'm going to put one right near where the the hat band joins and actually that ought to do it that looks pretty good to me